With nations reenacting travel bans left, right, and center, and medical authorities working around the clock to learn more about the dangers of a new COVID variant, President Joe Biden today addressed the public, saying that the strain is cause for concern, but not for panic. According to the World Health Organization, the new strain, Omicron, poses a very high global risk. We're tracking this up to the minute and want to now bring in Dr. Purvi Parikh. She's an allergist and immunologist at NYU Langone. Dr. Parikh, it's good to speak with you here on Quick Take. President Biden said concern and not panic. So let's start with how concerned you are about Omicron. Right. You know, so the variant is concerning because this is the most mutations that we've seen to date on that spike protein, which is what all of our vaccines that we're using currently target, you know, so it is concerning. Uh, but the reason why we're not panicking yet is that we, we don't yet know, um, is this something that's going to be causing mild disease, severe disease? Um, our vaccines may still be very efficacious against it. So what this actually means is we just need to use those common sense precautions, especially as we move into those winter months. Okay, and you raised some very, very critical questions about the variant that we still don't know the answer to. Notably, how quickly does it spread? Is it capable of causing more serious disease? And as you mentioned, what's most important here or top of mind for so many is will it overwhelm the immunity that is offered by existing vaccines and also previous infections? How long will it take the doctors, the medical establishment to find out the answers to these kinds of questions? Is it something like days or something like weeks? Right. Well, thanks to South Africa, we were alerted quickly of this new variant and now we've identified cases globally, but it will take at least two to three weeks for us to test our current vaccines um, and for us to really see the full impact. Is it just mild disease? Is it severe disease? Does this increase hospitalizations, deaths, transmission? Uh, remember, all viruses have that incubation period, so it's not something we can find out overnight. Right, right. Okay. And of course, Omicron was first detected in the southern part of Africa, Botswana and South Africa specifically, earlier this month. And it's already been detected in more than a dozen countries since then, including places like Hong Kong, which is a highly traveled region, although perhaps not as much recently. What is your confidence, Dr. Parikh, that the variant is or isn't in the United States right now? Right. Well, realistically speaking, I think it likely is in the United States, especially in major cities like New York, which are gateways to the rest of the world. I think it's only a matter of time before cases here are identified, but we already have uh, cases in North America. And so I wouldn't be surprised if it's already in the U.S. But that being said, still the majority, overwhelming majority are from the Delta variant. So, uh, again, that's why we're still urging everyone, please get vaccinated. You know, this is your best bet to prevent uh, any infection and hopefully severe disease. And I'm glad you bring up Delta. Does that mean, does the rise of Omicron mean that the Delta variant is kind of in its last legs or is it still raging? No, not necessarily. Um, you know, the majority of cases, over 90 percent, uh, even today, yesterday, are all Delta variant. So uh, absolutely, those vaccinations will not only help for Delta variant, but remember uh, that these vaccines may still be very efficacious even with Omicron. So um, and we're seeing that these variants are arising in places of the world where vaccination rates are low. In South Africa, it's only around 24, 25 percent. So this further stresses the importance of vaccination to uh, prevent future variants and why we need to get uh, vaccines to everybody, even our neighbors where um, they may have lower rates. Yeah, and it really highlights the, the differing speed and timeline that we've been able to roll out vaccines and even booster shots uh, between the rich world and the developing world. President Biden urged Americans to get vaccinated or get their booster shots. Does the emergence of Omicron change the booster timeline? I mean, previously we were kind of conditioned to think, OK, you get a booster shot, that'll probably be something once every six months. Do we now move to something like once every three months? No, I don't think it necessarily will increase the frequency of the boosters because we have great data um, that even six months, eight months down the line, uh, our current vaccines are efficacious in preventing hospitalizations, preventing deaths, severe disease. So the, it's still very, very effective. The boosters are just to say proactive in case there is waning of immunity, in case there are new variants. So this doesn't necessarily mean we'll need more boosters or more frequent boosters. Gotcha. But if you're due, please go get one. 
Okay, so that's what we know we should do. And then there's the actual issue of what whether we will do any of it because it's flu season, it's also the holiday season. I've been in conversations where people are talking about how they're gonna be doing a lot of traveling, there's gonna be a lot of get togethers. I mean, I've heard people mm -hmm. say that they don't have time right now to go get a booster and risk getting sick for the day afterwards, that they can really only do it after the holidays. And I know that this doesn't make sense in the context of what we're saying, but talk about the timing of this variant to emerge because middle of the holidays, middle of flu season, it's kind of like a perfect storm. Right, absolutely. What I would say is, you know, make the time. Uh, this should be an absolute priority. Uh, the reason being is that any vaccine needs at least two weeks to have its full efficacy, whether it be your flu shot or your COVID booster or even your, you know, initial COVID vaccination. So uh, if you want to be protected for that holiday season, it's worth feeling run down for maybe a day versus getting sick or even worse, ending up in the hospital or with long-term complications. Yeah, even so though, we have those um, antibodies that have now been developed. I know they're super expensive, um, but they are effective. Do we have any sense of whether these antibodies um, are going to be effective against the new variant as well? Yeah, so that's another uh, unanswered question that hopefully we'll know in the upcoming weeks. Um, you know, it looks as if these antibodies should be helpful with the variants, but we don't know. We need to test it on individuals who do get sick enough to require those antibodies. But again, that's not something that I would bank on. Uh, even with antibody treatments, people still get very ill. People still need hospital care or even have long COVID or long haul consequences, which you don't want. You know, I see patients 18, 19 months later unable to function. You know, the bet, your best bet is preventing infection altogether. Yeah, taking the steps now. The U.S. has already imposed travel restrictions on eight nations in South Africa or the southern part of Africa. Does that mean... Well, I mean, does it actually move the needle? Because we're, we've talked about how there are other countries that are outside of Africa that have already seen cases and it's been detected there. And so realistically, as you mentioned, it's probably at some point in somewhere in the United States. So these, all, these travel restrictions, these travel bans are now being imposed. It's kind of after the fact and it may make us feel better, but does it actually change anything? Right, that's a great question. So what we've found from a public health standpoint is the travel bans don't really help. Uh, they don't help curb spread. If anything, it can make things even worse because one, people find their way against uh, around the travel bans, people underreport if they're actually sick. And unfortunately, then it punishes the countries that are helping alert us quickly, such as uh, South Africa, who, uh, you know, very correctly told us and put us on alert for this important variant. So, again, by the time you impose these bans, it's already too late. It's already spread in that region and likely elsewhere. So um, they are not very effective. You know, we're, we're dealing with Omicron, and it just occurred to me that we're going to get through the Greek alphabet fairly quickly, and we'll have to go back to the top again and start looking at the next version of beta. At what point does a virus stop mutating? Um, I mean, I've, I've heard from people that mutations work so long as they find new hosts and continue to spread, but if they kill off their, their patient, then it's not a very effective uh, mutation. And so in order to stay effective, it needs to continue to spread, but not actually do so much damage that uh, the patient then can't transmit it to someone else. Correct. You know, you know, it's in the best interest of the virus to actually uh, weaken as it mutates, because as you correctly said, then it can live on from host to host. And that's the idea. Um, and possibly what we could be seeing even with Omicron, because to date, we've only seen reports of milder cases. So fingers crossed that this isn't something that turns into something that uh, causes severe disease, deaths, or hospitalizations. But believe it or not, the one thing that can help is, again, the vaccination, because the milder something is as it passes from person to person, and people who are vaccinated get mild disease, then you know it's even uh, more likely to, quote unquote, burn out sooner. So that is the natural progression of viruses, and hopefully will be happening soon uh, with these COVID-19 variants. Okay, that's, that's a piece of good news there. So if Omicron continues right. to be something that um, spreads, but may not actually do more damage than just um, come across as a bad cold, that may be an indication that the virus is petering out and the mutations are getting weaker and weaker, which would be a positive development. But we, come, we keep coming back to the need to get vaccinated, um, the need to get booster shots. 
Obviously, some rich countries, the U.S. included, are rolling out their booster shots. Other developing countries are still trying to administer their first shot of the two-step vaccine. So realistically, how effective can the U.S. or Israel, the U.K.'s approach really be if there's a certain threshold of the world's population that just isn't vaccinated yet? Right. You know, vaccine inequity is a huge issue, you know, because as we've seen for the last two years, an outbreak anywhere is an outbreak everywhere. So, um, yes, boosters help. They help slow the spread, especially as people in the U.S., U.K., Israel are traveling. So hopefully those boosters will further help slow down the spread. But uh, we can't ignore the elephant in the room, which is getting every individual on this planet vaccinated. It, it's in our best interest. It's in their best interest. So really policies do need to focus on that vaccine inequity. Otherwise, we're going to constantly have these moments of high alert. Gotcha. At what point would the government or organizations be advised to perhaps um, cancel in-person get-togethers? There's a lot of conferences coming up. There are a lot of uh, events around the holidays that people are organizing. At what point should people think about perhaps suspending all of that and, and not going back into lockdown, but choosing the cautious route. Right. So, you know, that really depends on your geographic region and that can change, you know, moment to moment. So it all will depend on um, how fast infection rates are rising in the area where you live, in addition to resources being depleted. So if, again, hospitals start to become overwhelmed, uh, healthcare workers resources are being depleted, you know, faster than the need of the patients in that area, then we may want to consider some of those restrictions. Um, but again, you know, I don't think a universal lockdown is necessary as every geographic region is different. Colder areas might get um, hit harder initially because we know viruses spread more indoors versus outdoors. So there's so many factors to consider. So again, it's very regional and geographic and unique to your location. Got it. Dr. Purvi Parikh, thank you so much for joining us and giving us uh, the latest on Omicron. Dr. Parikh is an allergist and immunologist at NYU Langone.